In this video, I'll demonstrate my technique for recreating a shot from the 1923 title sequence using After Effects and a little AI. Hi, my name is Cameron and I'm the creator of Motion Science. Before we get started, I wanted to invite you to join my complimentary workshop at motionscience.tv slash workshop, where I unveil my personal techniques and hidden gems that I use in my daily workflows. This is a free workshop and takes about 30 minutes. Don't miss out on this chance to level up your skills and make sure to visit motionscience.tv slash workshop after watching this video, you won't regret it. In this video, I'll be using the AI tool Mid Journey Photoshop and After Effects to create a vintage cowboy themed title sequence shot. To start off, we'll be using the powerful AI tool Mid Journey to generate our cowboy portrait. Simply type in your prompt, such as imagine a cowboy portrait and let Mid Journey do the rest. In just a few seconds, you will have a beautiful image. Mid Journey is an incredible tool that can save you a lot of time and effort, so make sure to take advantage of it. After generating the cowboy portrait using Mid Journey, the next step is to extract a depth map in Photoshop. To do this, open the Cowboy Portrait in Photoshop 2023 or newer and use the neural filter Depth Blur to extract a depth map. A depth map is a grayscale image that represents the distance of each pixel in the image from the camera. Once the depth map is generated, we need to invert it so that the brightest white represents the parts of the image that are closest to the camera, while the darker areas represent the parts that are further away. To invert the depth map in Photoshop, go to Image in the top menu and select Adjustments and then Invert. Now it's it's time to import the Photoshop file into After Effects. To do this, import the Photoshop file as a composition so that After Effects imports both the image and the depth map layers. Next, select the Cowboy Portrait layer and add a displacement map effect to it. In the effects control panel, choose the depth map layer as the displacement map source. The displacement map will now distort the cowboy portrait based on the grayscale values of the depth map. To fine tune the effect and remove some of the distortion weirdness, you need to add blur to the depth map. This will help to blend the white and gray values and make the effect look more natural. To add blur to the depth map, select the depth map layer and add a fast box blur effect to it. It's important here that you change source in the displacement map effect to effects and masks so that the displacement effect recognizes the blur that is applied to the depth map. To animate the displacement effect, add keyframes to the displacement properties at the beginning and end of the timeline. This will create an animation that gradually distorts the cowboy layer over time. You can adjust the timing and intensity of the effect by adjusting the keyframes in the timeline. By using the displacement map effect on the cowboy portrait layer, we were able to create a dynamic and interesting movement effect that gives the impression of depth and dimension. After creating the displacement effect on the cowboy layer, it's time to position the portrait in the final composition. Start by creating a new composition, drag the cowboy portrait layer into the timeline of the new composition, then position the portrait according to the rule of thirds. By following the rule of thirds when positioning the cowboy in the composition, we can create a more visually interesting and compelling shot that draws the viewer's attention to the most important elements in the frame. To add a textured background to the composition, we can search for a suitable rough paper texture online. Once we have a suitable texture, we can import it into After Effects, drag the texture file into the composition, and place it below the cowboy layer. By adding a rough paper texture to the background of the composition, we can create a more interesting and visually engaging shot that adds depth and texture to the final image. To create a vintage look for the composition, we can add an adjustment layer in After Effects by selecting Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. This will create a new layer that affects all layers below it in the timeline. We can then apply color correction effects such as Lumetri Color and CC Toner. Lumetri Color is a powerful color grading tool that allows us to adjust the exposure, contrast, color balance, and other parameters of the image. One effective technique for creating a vintage look is to use the vignette and faded film parameters in Lumetri Color. The vignette effect darkens the edges of the image, while the faded film effect adds a softer look to the colors and contrast. By adjusting the settings of these effects, we can create a custom vintage look that suits the style of the shot. This process can involve a lot of trial and error, but with some patience and experimentation, we can create a custom vintage look that complements the style of the shot and enhances its overall impact. We can further 
further enhance the overall aesthetic of the composition by adding grain and a curves effect. To do this, we can apply the add grain effect to an adjustment layer. We can adjust the settings of the grain effect to our preference, depending on how much grain we want to add to the image. Next, we can add a curves effect to an adjustment layer. We can use the curves effect to tweak the highlights, midtones, and shadows of the image to fine tune the overall look. After applying the grain and curves effect, we should have a vintage looking composition with a consistent and cohesive visual style. To create a sense of depth and realism, we will make the cowboy and background layers 3D. We'll start by selecting the cowboy layer and clicking on the 3D layer icon. Next, we'll add a 3D camera to the composition by selecting layer, new, camera. With the camera layer selected, we can animate it to slowly push into the scene, creating a sense of movement and depth. To do this, we'll add keyframes to the position property of the camera layer, starting with the camera position far away from the scene and ending with the camera position closer to the cowboy. Additionally, we'll reverse the keyframes of the cowboy displacement effect so that the movement of the cowboy complements the camera movement. This will create a more natural and organic effect that looks as if the cowboy portrait is reacting to the camera movement. By combining the 3D layers, the 3D camera, and the reverse keyframes, we can create a realistic and dynamic shot that adds depth and movement to the composition. To make this shot a true title sequence, we can add a line of type to the composition. We can create a new text layer in After Effects and position it in the scene using, again, the rule of thirds. To add more visual interest to the scene, we'll add another texture to the foreground of the composition. We'll make this layer 3D and position it slightly further forward in Z space than the cowboy layer. This will create a little parallax effect as the camera pushes in, making the shot more dynamic. To make sure the texture doesn't overpower the rest of the composition, we'll play around with the position and size until we find the right balance. We can also add a levels effect to reduce the overall amount of texture in the shot. To complete the shot, we'll add a blurry vignette to the composition to soften the edges. This is done using an adjustment layer with a mask and the fast blur effect. Invert the mask and increase the feather amount until the edges are sufficiently softened. This effect will create a soft blurry border around the edges of the composition, drawing the viewer's attention to the center of the shot. With the vignette effect in place, the shot is complete and ready for use in the title sequence. And there you have it. That's how you can recreate a shot from the 1923 title sequence using the AI tool Mid Journey, Photoshop, and After Effects. I hope this was both educational and entertaining for you. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Your support means the world to me and helps me to continue creating content. I would love to hear your thoughts on the video, so please leave a comment or question below. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to connecting with you in my next video. Thank you.